I'm Maureen Whitehouse, a spiritual teacher and a miracle mentor. This clip you're about to watch is from a much longer talk I gave to my subscribers in the Miracle Meeting Place. It's an online program and community I made for people who want to experience more miracles in their lives. If that sounds like you, check out the link in the description below. And if you resonate with anything I say in this video, please click that like button and be sure to subscribe to my channel. I release new clips and videos every week and I don't want you to miss a beat. Thanks. If you're facing a lot of resistance to forgiving yourself, do you recommend a certain mantra or practice to get past that? Okay. First of all, know again that that's the last holdout of the ego. Once you start forgiving the rest of the world, all of a sudden you're giving other people the benefit of the doubt and, and you're letting them just evolve the way they need to evolve on their own sacred path. Remember that everybody's path is sacred no matter what they're doing and how they're living it. That truly is their business. So now you've got more attention and energy to, to focus on yourself. And the hard part about that when you first started focusing this attention on yourself is that you, the ego is going to say, okay, I'm not chewing on that world anymore. I'm going to chew on you. And it turns it around and starts to say, okay, who do you think you are? Who do you, you're arrogant and, and self-absorbed and who are you to spend time just on your own stuff or on doing your own things you love? You know, there's a, you are responsible. You have a lot of responsibilities out there. You've got to survive. You've got to, all these things that the ego does to promote fear just by being in your own space and minding your own business. Because we weren't taught early on, most of us, that being in your own space and in your own business is sacred territory. And you've got to be in your own space and in your own business in order to connect with the something more, with the divine of you, in order to have this vertical experience. So if you become, in quote, selfish enough to start to become self-aware, you're going to notice that the ego is going to follow you in there trying to chew, chew, chew on any semblances of peace and to take you away from yourself and your own um, undivided attention on your divinity, on your oneness. So this is what I would suggest, again, starting first thing in the morning because it sets the tone for the day, that you allow yourself to just breathe and release and relax and surrender, that you don't have to do any more than just breathe to connect to the divine. You came in with your first breath, you'll leave with your last into this lifetime. So every time you slow your breath down deliberately, you're allowing your mind to slow down. You're stopping the mind chatter before it even starts. Sleep is great because it's a pattern interrupt. So it brings you to that relaxed place. First thing in the morning, while you're still relaxed, allow yourself to connect deliberately to the divine. And that doesn't mean you have to meditate for hours or browbeat yourself with these like things that make you a special, austere person. It just means allow yourself to say, I'm determined to stay in peace today by noticing what's in my heart of hearts, by just noticing the voice that's in me, that's my intuition, that's the voice of my own best interest, that takes care of my own business. And then just see what would feel, you might wanna write, I always advocate in the morning, that like kind of brain drain, if you've been used to your mind thinking, 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 just let yourself drain it on a page without even having to look at it do like three whole pages, like the morning pages of, of the artist's way, or I call them brain drains. Just drain three pages if you need, if you find that your mind is always obsessively thinking. Get it out and don't even look at it again. Does there, it's, not, it's just draining that. And, and the, the act of spending time, quality time with yourself is something that your true self is recognizing. Hey, she's, she's serious here now about spending time with me that's undivided. And then just know that's enough. You don't have to perform for yourself. Just allow for yourself to be in this space where I don't know what it is, but I love it, is the way that you keep yourself in love consistently. You don't have to know what the world is doing or what it's about, and you can still love it. And then just notice that if you're facing a lot of resistance to forgiving yourself, that that's one and the same as living a life that the ego is ruling the show and that instead just say, purify my perception or help, or I can see peace instead of this, 
all three of those things, and if you're saying help to your divine self, expect then, leave the little pause where you start to hear the same voice, the true voice of the divine prompting you what to do next. Expect to be surprised and delighted so that then you're not letting your cogitating mind lead you into the next moment. Expect that there'll be surprises and delights so you're kind of setting yourself back and letting peace lead the way. And let yourself walk in gratitude. There's a line in one of the lessons in A Course in Miracles, love is the way I walk in gratitude. So you're, I don't know what it is, but I love it. That means you're in love. You're in that mode of operandum where you're letting love lead the way. And you walk in gratitude because you're appreciating things. Gratitude and appreciation are the fast road to oneness. Relaxing, breathing is the fast road to oneness. Stopping, if you're feeling yourself distressed or disoriented or believing in the world too much, stop, close your eyes, get yourself into the vastness, the world of oneness instead of this and that. Take a few deep breaths, drink some water, let yourself relax. And know this, that the ego will never say to you what I'm saying to you now, that you're so important, that the divine brought you here to be the very pattern interrupt in the crazy illusion, to be the embodiment of the divine and the love and the joy and the delight and the creativity that the world doesn't know yet. And don't see that as pressure filled or something to perform. You can't do it from an ego, so just relax. The one who relaxes the most wins. The more you just relax and let the divine come through you, the more you're going to be guided in every way. And you'll see the synchronicities, you'll see the things, you'll see the relationships, you'll see appreciative eyes. They'll, the divine will set it up so that they're just those, the flags on the sides of the road. The appreciative people and, and the circumstances that let you shine will just appear. Relax. Don't try. Relax.